All right. What are you, are you peeking? No, not okay. at all, not at all, not at all. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Couch Potatoes? We are back today with some more post credits. Today, we're talking about the newly released to home video, uh, Insidious The Red Door. I think this is kind of, uh, I guess you would feel it's kind of weird to say this is kind of like the uh, the end of the trilogy when it's a series with five movies, but it does very much feel like the end of that that family story here. So um, I was very, very excited about this. Were you excited about this? I, I was a little pumped. I liked the series. I like the prequels. Yeah. I know yeah, they I don't so. get as, as good of a reception, but I enjoyed them. I always kind of have felt like, because I feel like you get this confused with The Conjuring because they both have they both have Patrick Wilson in it. But uh, I feel like it's always, to me, it's always kind of felt like that next best thing, not quite on the level with The Conjuring, but, but, but you know, it's something that I was really, really looking forward to. So uh, we watched this. We're very, very excited about it. This was my... Uh, my, I guess you would say, like, if I were power ranking these movies that we picked for Fright Fest, this was the one I was most excited about. And I'm just going to say, <sighs> kind of felt like a missed opportunity. 100%. You think so, too? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think that it just felt almost like I would say an epilogue. It's, it's how I say it felt like a, kind of like an epilogue for the first two movies. I didn't feel like it really solved anything that I really. I wanted to know more about Darth Maul face. Yes. And I felt almost like Darth Maul face was almost in this less than he was in the first two movies. Right. It was just a shadow of a memory. And, you know, I know they couldn't bring back uh, Lynn, you know, obviously, because of what happened to her. So I thought they'd find a way. And they did kind of find sort of a way, you know, to have her at least featured in the movie. But I don't yeah. know. I feel like the movie really was kind of, even though Insidious 2, she wasn't in that. But I just, I felt like it, maybe it's because we got so attached to her in the prequels. I kind of felt like I was missing her a little bit. Lynn. It was missing something, a lot of bit. So I, I think your biggest problem was you felt like it was a, a father-son movie, right? It's a daddy's issue movie. Da- daddy issues movie? Daddy's got daddy's issues. Son's got daddy's issues. Mm. Uh, room, new roommate, who I actually really enjoyed. Usually these the uh, third act characters uh, added She on. had dead parents that were not going to explain why that matters, the story issues. Right. Like, yeah. how is that not part of the furthering? Oh, and... How can we not have more further? Oh, I felt like that could. I, I don't know. It's like this was about an hour and a half. And it was like, usually I want these movies to be shorter, especially horror movies. I feel like 90 minutes is perfect for a horror movie. That's why I kind of found a wish that like, had been longer. Because like, okay, so Patrick Wilson's character, like he doesn't remember anything. So then when he does remember, all of a sudden, boom, he's he's back to being like a pro bowler. Like immediately, yeah. like within three Dive minutes, in. he's all the way back to that red door. And I was like, really? So he just remembered that he could do this and he's already the best at it again. And it just kind of felt like there was, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes of this movie was kind of missing. Right. Right. And I, I feel like maybe there's two or three storylines going on and we got shortchanged on all of them. And they start, you know, with uh, with his mother passing away. And I thought that was going to come back into play somehow. What, maybe right. that's, they just couldn't get the actress to come back. I'm not sure. But, uh, or, you know, heaven forbid she passed away in real, in real life. life. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. It just, it just seemed like there was something missing. I think I just, I expected something more. I don't know. Maybe that was on me. Maybe my expectations were just too high. I feel like maybe, yes, my expectations were too high because he did enjoy the first two movies and the prequels. So I'm looking for this to come back and kind of finish up that family storyline. I knew that was going to happen, but I needed some more further. And you're going to tell me it's the red door and you're going to preview me the, the red faced demon. And I'm not getting yeah. any of that in the Yeah, I also thought movie. it was a weird choice to... Renee, is that his wife's name? She was like almost a cameo herself in yeah. this. I felt like it was weird kind of... So, I mean, like they were going to be 10 years later, you're going to divide this family up and stuff, you know, because of these issues. I I get that. But it just, I don't know. It just felt disjointed. I just, you know, I wanted to, I really wanted this to be great because I think Patrick Wilson's great. And this was his directorial debut. I was very excited for him. And it just, same. I don't know. It felt like the script kind of let him down. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I can't blame it all and again I, I won't say it's terrible I, I didn't i don't feel like i wish i had this time back oh, in my no. life no it's good and i'm glad we watched it because i needed that kind of closure or sum up of their of the family storyline so there's that if we're going to continue into this franchise of furthering you, you know what i think my biggest point was is like one time there was one moment in this entire movie that actually like was even remotely scary it, the, the mri scene that was oh, it yeah, the mri was... scene was it was kind of creepy but other than that i was like I mean, I think back to I mean, Insidious Two was kind of almost like a thriller. So you know, you didn't really, you didn't really have as much scares as you did that first one. I mean, you couldn't have, you know, be as scary as the first like ninety seconds of the first movie for that you. That is the scariest intro. Yeah, <laughs> the scariest. But I don't know. Uh, I it just, I again, I think expectations can be a downer on things like this. So uh, 
Ah, uh, gosh. I, I say I'd give him maybe a two and a half out of five, I guess I would say. And not scary at all. So yeah. two and a half out of five. It definitely my least favorite of the three. I'd say it's on par with the prequels, which I didn't like as much as you. I, yeah. I just like the actress who plays Lynn. I think she's great. But she is. But uh, yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of first big disappointment of a uh, fright fest this year. Where, where are you going? You got two scales. I do. I'm gonna do on the movie scale. I did think overall it was a good movie, choppy, um, undeveloped storylines, but a three out of five stars for a movie, especially considering where it is in that trilogy and what the the role it serves. Eh, okay. And then yeah, on scary, I was expecting big scares and. Scary times one. with the red faced demon, and I got two pumpkins because two pumpkins. That MRI scene was that was pretty good. It was yeah, and um, I did have some uh, going up the stairs to say goodnight to the kids in the dark, and I'm like, okay, I don't need the red devil right, face. So maybe it did work a little better than I thought. Well, okay. you know, I'm an easy scare too, and also uh, that uh, frat kid scene that was a good jump gross out really yeah that I was gross you, huh? yeah if you if you're scared of vomiting guys i'll just say I'm scared of vomiting I'm scared of vomiting yes you have you how's your goal going to life, never throw up again life goal of never throwing up again doing great doing I'm good right. huh she doesn't drink as much as i used to so she didn't have that problem guys well that's that's kind of where we're at uh, as far as i there we didn't even know uh we watched uh one of the videos on youtube like the ending explained or something didn't even oh. know there was a post credits but apparently it just shows like the door opening you know, to show that the franchise isn't dead. Uh, to me, it's like, yeah, I guess let's move on from, is it the Lamberts? That's their names? The Lamberts, let's move on from them if we're going to keep this franchise going and we don't have more story to tell. I like your interpretation of the ending better than my interpretation of the ending. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I we'll save that for you in case you guys haven't seen it, but let's just say that uh, my interpretation of the ending is it's not quite as happy as it makes it look like it's going to be. But, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I'm just in that dark place when I'm watching a horror movie. So I, I, I think you have valid reasons to feel that way. I don't think you're right, but I like it better. Yeah. Just got to eat gotta read more grimdark i think all right guys that's where we're at for insidious the red door so have you seen it drop in the comments and let us know and we will talk to you there